I'm Jamie Bucklin with the West Virginia Few, and I'm talking today with some folks from Nevada Action that have um, expertise in micro schooling. So we're going to talk for a few minutes about micro schooling in West Virginia and what that is going to look like as we implement Hope Scholarship. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Dawn, why don't you get us started and, and we'll just talk through this whole ordeal of micro schooling. Thanks, Jamie, and uh, thanks to Tom for, for having us. I'm Don Streifer. I'm the founder of uh, Nevada Action for School Options and uh, Microschooling NV. We've had a lot of luck with microschools of all sorts of, of, of types and, and fantastic uh, people from all, all, all walks of uh, life and different approaches here in Nevada. And we are eager to help West Virginians grow microschools that are the best match for their needs and help whoever we can. Great, great. And Ashley? Hi, I'm Ashley Campbell. I'm the Chief of Staff at Nevada Action. And I think one of my favorite things about microschooling is how each time we go to a different microschool that we work with, it's just each one that we pop into is so different. And I love that they're really created around the needs of the learners that they're serving. Um, I'm really excited about some of the things that we've created here and really excited about working with West Virginia. Um, the times that I've been to West Virginia, I've absolutely fallen in love with how beautiful your state is. So I'm excited to spend some time there. Well, thank you. Yeah, so you guys are going to be traveling out here in a couple of weeks, and the few will be promoting that to make sure that all of you families that are following our work know when they're going to be here and when you can connect with them in person. I think we want to start out with just kind of understanding the uh, vocabulary with, you know, as we work to like transform K-12 education on West Virginia, which is no small thing. We're trying to figure out like what terms to use and what is attached to um, what here. So what is microschooling? Yeah, microschooling really does not have a set definition. Microschooling uh, tends to be small, right? We really like to work with um, no more than 15 learners in a group and multifamily. So um, as long as there's multiple families coming together to, to educate their children, we're happy to help however we can. Um, and it's really something that, that we love about it. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's really built around the needs of the learners. So it, it's not something where you're like, oh, hey, I like that model there. Let me pick it up and and bring it here to West Virginia. It's getting to know the families you're working with, getting to know the learners and um, what their needs are, if they're below grade level, at grade level, above grade level, what their interests are, what their um, academic goals are, and building a program around those specific needs that meets for that meets the needs of your families. Um, it can be hybrid, it can be every day. It's really a flexible, nimble way of schooling. Yeah. How many days a week do you typically see? Like, are, can you, if you're just like two days a week and you're kind of doing this enrichment, is that really a micro school or do you feel like it needs to lean more towards a, um, a relationship with, you know, the, the teachers, if you will, who are involved with the micro school, partnered with the families? Like, is it two days, three days? What's the, the norm that you see? Well, you said the magic word relationship, right? That's really what this is all about to reach its potential. We love hybrid approaches and depending on where people are, if people are real rural and getting together five days a week is prohibitive, if we can do it two or three days a week, as long as the work that kids are doing at home connects in a constructive, useful way to the work that they're doing in person. So it really gets the, the combines the best of the, the personalized experience with the rich in-person value that you can get from, from getting together as a group. Um, it absolutely can be hybrid, and and uh, if it's in a, a church or an employer or a, a something that's sponsored by a, a local government, um, if they're there uh, five days a week, which we did a lot of during the pandemic, right, when we were competing with kids being left home alone with a jar of peanut butter, that's one thing. But it, but we're but the beauty of microschooling is that you really can build it around the needs of individual families and individual learners, and we'd love to help you take whatever shape you feel best to do and, and help you however we can. Yeah. So who does microschooling West Virginia serve? Yeah, there's um, a variety of ways that, that we can help. So if there's a family that says, hey, I really want a micro school opportunity for my kiddos, but I'm not ready to jump in and start a micro school, we can help connect you with micro schooling leaders. So we'd love to hear from you, hear what your kiddos' interests are, what you're looking for, and then we can connect you with some leaders for, to find the best schooling option that'll work for your family. Um, if you're an individual who says, oh, that sounds like something I really want to do, 
we can help with that. We um, love to sit down one-on-one with microschooling leaders, potential microschooling leaders, and really just help create a plan that works for them. Um, and we can be as involved as much or as little as, as you want. Um, but just sitting down, getting an idea of what it is that you want to do. If you need help with curriculum sub- suggestions, we can help with that. Um, if you've got it figured out already, that's great. Offering any support, advice that we can along the way. There's a lot of a lot of different things to consider when you're considering starting up a micro school. For so, for example, like are you doing this in your home, and if so, do you have a HOA? Like that, that could be a tricky situation. So, just really thinking through what some of the obstacles might be, making sure that you're set up for success, so that it can be a, a just great experience for everybody involved. And then also we've been doing a lot of work with employers as well. So employers who are struggling right now to attract and retain individuals in their workforce, um, adding a micro school as a benefits option is really appealing. And that's something that's been a useful recruiting tool and and useful for retaining employees as well. So if you're an employer um, that's looking to to add to your benefits package, we're happy to to sit down with you and, and talk that through as well. I love that. So this is hard because we're doing this interview and I'm trying to take like hours of conversations that I've had with you guys uh, leading up to this and condense it into the next few minutes so that our families um, get to hear what I've been hearing from you guys for the past couple months. Um, One of the uh, things that I love that you guys do is lead with listening. So it, it's your paying attention to where a parent might be or where an educational entrepreneur might be. And you're like listening to what their need is or what their idea is. And then actually putting the wheels on the wagon, which is like that, you know, the big part of this is trying to get that plan together and then actually put the wheels on it to move them forward. So I hadn't even thought, I guess, about the employer thing. I mean, that makes perfect sense. That's great. So if I wanted to start a micro school, um, I would reach out to micro school in West Virginia and connect with you guys. And then what, like, what are some things that I would be thinking about? So start thinking about the age of the learners that you want to serve. We love multi-age. That's totally fine. My favorite version of micro school is the 1870s version, maybe updated with a little bit of the newest tools and, and pedagogies and technology. Think about the number of kids. Remember, micro schools can really start small and grow. We've had micro schools start with one classroom, two classrooms and grow to 100 kids. You can totally do that later down the road if you want. We also, we're not selling you anything. We raise our own our own operating funds. So we have tools that we love. We have curriculum that we love that we're happy to recommend. And maybe you want to start there and maybe we can help you, you know, if, if your kids are not responding to a particular kind of math and you want to switch down the road, it doesn't need to be daunting because the beauty of microschooling living up to its potential, right, is you can adjust on the fly as you go. That's why we believe microschools are so much better than the you know, the rigid, locked in textbook adopted, twenty you know, expensive big schoolhouse. You can really build this around your needs. So so um reach out. We've got a lot of resources resources on our microschooling wv.org website. And we'll we've got lots of suggestions, lots of ways that you might you know tools that you might want to start with. And the more we understand what you want to do, maybe you want to have a faith-based focus. Maybe you want to focus on ecology and the and the environment. There's lots of ways and lots of tools that we've used before or the the micro schools that we work with have used before and we'd love to help you from from there. And uh, maybe take a look at the website and reach out to us. Yeah, this is so it's just kind of so neat how um, my worlds are colliding. So I've been working with homeschoolers for over the last decade and we've been building co-ops and hybrids and, um, you know, I guess similar programs that are four day a week, five day, five day a week that really just didn't have a name. And so when I met you guys, when I first heard about the work that you guys are doing, I was so excited because what I found in my work is that you can have a great idea. And you can be excited even about that idea and you can have people ready to partner with you. But often what we need is guidance and support and direction. And so sometimes when you get that great idea, 
in order for it to be sustainable, you really need, it takes a village, right? You've got to be plugged in with the right people. And that's what I feel like you guys are bringing to the table is this um, offer to support and guide families or educational entrepreneurs in the process of this so that when the unforeseen circumstances, you know, things start happening, they've got, they're plugged in with someone and they can talk to somebody, figure out what needs to happen and, and not feel like they're just left alone um, in the process. So that's what I love that you guys are doing. I feel like we've covered most everything. Where could someone go if they wanted to learn more? You said it's microschoolingwv.org. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So that's where we want to direct traffic. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you. And we'll have and then, all of our social media uh, up there on our website that you can click on to get to Facebook or anything like that as well. But what we can do then is direct traffic there. I know you guys are planning to be in person here too, right? You're going to travel to West Virginia? Yeah, we're excited. Our next trip is coming up. We'll be there that first week in June. So okay. uh, we'd love to, to meet with anybody that, that wants some some help getting started. With, if you want us to stop by and grab a cup of coffee or anything like that, we'll be available that first week. Right, right. That's great. So for all of you that are following along um, with the work of the West Virginia Families United for Education, the West Virginia Few, we're featuring providers. We were talking with Don and Ashley here from Nevada Action, microschoolingwv.org. And what we'll do is make sure that we're directing this towards their social media so that you can be connected. Um, you can find them both um, through that contact us at microschoolingwv.org. So if you have questions, we want you to feel guided and supported. Um, just let us know how we can best do that. Ashley, Dawn, thank you so much for being with me this afternoon. And um, we'll get this out to our families. And I do hope that you guys have much success in our state working with these families, because I know that there are plenty of people that are going to benefit from your work. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.